My name is Shirley Self, and I'm here to talk astrology. And today I wanted to talk about a couple of important Arabic parts. Now, uh, we don't use Arabic parts a lot, um, except for Fortuna. You'll see Fortuna in your chart. It's that circle with an X in it. Um, when Ptolemy um, saved <laughs> Hellenistic astrology from going down the tubes, in his Tetra, Tetra Biblios, that's the book or books he wrote, um, he abandoned the Arabic parts except for Fortuna. And he abandoned the difference between a Fortuna in a day birth and a Fortuna in a night birth. And um, so that's the one <laughs> we've been using. Here's the way you calculate Fortuna. Uh, for a day birth... You take the sun uh, from the moon, subtract the sun from the moon, and project that number from the ascendant. Now, this is the chart of the United States. So we're a day birth, and that uh, a fortuna is up here. The difference between the sun and the moon has been projected from the ascendant. For a night birth, you do it the opposite. You subtract the moon from the sun and project that from the Ascendant. Now, um, there's an, another part that's very important, the part of spirit. And if you do Fortuna wrong, if you calculate Fortuna wrong, what you got is the part of spirit. Um, so part of spirit, the way you calculate that is for a day birth, you subtract the moon from the sun and project that from the Ascendant. For a night birth, you subtract the sun from the moon. And you project that from the ascendant. Now, Fortuna, um, it's considered lunar. And what it indicates is the department of your life that will uh, contribute the most to your um, physical, material well welfare. Now, the part of spirit indicates the virtually the wishes of the daemon. Uh, the part of spirit used to be called the part of the daemon. Uh, to remind you, the daemon, well, let's go back. A, a pulley is um, long dead. Um, I wrote an interesting book called The Golden Ass, and um, he defined the um, difference between the gods and the daemons. The gods run the world. The daemons run us. So um, when you... Uh, when you put um, one of these, say you put this on the ascendant, then you, you can kind of read in the chart the setup that would bring the most material happiness to the most people. This would bring us uh, material happiness. And I noticed what it did was it took Pluto out of our second house of our treasures, our resources, Pluto, the uh, greedy um, big business, the the plutocrats, uh, uh, the oil companies, uh, etc. And, and you take them out of the second house and you put them over there on the cusp of the seventh house. The seventh house is also known as the house of the open enemy. And so that way people look at look at what happens when you when you do this you've got fortune here on the ascendant and you've got the people uh the stellium this cancer stellium in the 12th house in a condition notice the mercury here to negotiate us the people negotiate uh with the uh, open enemy the plutocrats big business um the Industries that are are swallowing our resources with very little of very little benefit to the people, to us, the citizens of the United States. So, <laughs> just that difference right there just made me smile. <laughs> yep, that's how that's how, this. You still got to deal with um, this issue of uh, of. Um, the Mars and Neptune square, the uh, Saturn opposite Chiron, all that stuff. 
but you work those things out. It brings, I think, the whole situation into clearer focus. And, um, okay. So let's look at, at what happens when you put spirit, the will of the daemon, on the ascending. Okay. The part of spirit was at 29 degrees of Aries. And when you put that 29 degrees of Aries, you've got um, Chiron right there in the 12th house. And anything that's this close <laughs> to the... Uh, the closer it gets to the uh, ascendant, the, the more you say it's, it rules the first house. And this uh, Chiron brings that whole issue of our wound. The wound in the United States chart is in the fourth house. And it has to do with uh, the guns, germs, steel, terror, and um, that, that wiped out, for instance, the Native Americans and... Um, gave free access to the white man invader. Um, the other issue of the wound is the enslavement of the black people. And this is that Chiron. Now remember what Chiron is. It's the hole in the world that lets the light in. Chiron is where you, you enter your hero's journey through the door of the Chiron. You do, you go on your soul's adventure, the one that was destined for you, when, when you uh, go through the door of Chiron. And it looks to me like, um, so this issue of reparations, uh, forgiveness, um, um, openness about uh, the, the wound that's still, oh, so deeply. Um, and I think that that is the big heel that stands on the consciousness of the United States that has bring us, brought us to this division. There are some people in the United States that want to deal with this issue, and they're not all Native American, and they're not all black. There are a lot of white people like me that have um, <laughs> studied the issue and um, feel like it's a burden that needs to be addressed. And I think that we will address that burden because we're going to have our Chiron return this spring. Uh, I had my Chiron return. You'll have your Chiron return um, somewhere uh, approaching 50, 50 years of age. And my Chiron return was one of the most painful uh, times in my life, only exceeded by the recent death of my husband. So I don't expect that this uh, Chiron return is going to be easy for us. But to be open and honest and give up the denial, that's one of the problems with this Mars-Neptune square is denial is so easy. You can live on in your fantasy with that. You can drive on thinking one thing when the truth is virtually the other. So I think we will deal we will start dealing, and it, it does not, it is not going to be easy. It is not going to be easy. But we must do it. Uh, South Africa did it. Germany did it. And all I did was acknowledge and say, I'm sorry. And we are sorry. And, um, and I think that guilt is a, the virtual, uh, foundation under racism. I could be wrong. Anyway, I pray that you are well and um, functional, <laughs> as I am fairly well and functional. And um, one thing I've learned in this last very difficult time, and learned it deeply, and I needed to learn it because I have a Pluto in Leo right on the cusp of the eighth house. Pluto has an awful lot to do with um, guilt or it ha and it has to do with transformation. And so when we can transform that guilt, I have it in Leo. So I had to relieve a face and eliminate all the, the guilt that kept me from freely loving people. I had to learn virtually how to love. And the United States has got to learn how to love Look at, look at 
for our Leo, our uh, North Node is in, at seven degrees of Leo. I think we can do this. I think we can do this. It's time. We're getting ready for our Chiron return. Be well. Tell the people you love that you love. Bye-bye.